And welcome back to The Breakfast. Good morning once again. We're going straight into talking about the major stories making headlines across the country this morning. And we would say good morning to Mr. Chris Wandu. Uh, good morning. Who's joined us. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. Good morning, good morning Nigeria. Yeah. All right. Let's go straight into it. We're starting with the Nation newspapers this morning. We'll take uh, as many of them as we can, and uh, we'll probably have you address two of the major stories. The big one there says uh, COVID-19 uh, killed uh, 405 Nigerians in two months, and that is from the PTF. And Sunday, Igboho is in the news once again. It says uh, Igboho takes anti-killer headsman battle to Ogun State. The presidency says uh, uh, TT's corruption, uh, Transparency International, I believe, corruption report indicted Nigerians. Okay. South-South governors to launch security outfits. That's also in the news. Tony Lumelu Foundation appoints senior executives. Buhari leads tributes for ex-minister Tony Momon, who uh, passed away uh, yesterday at the uh, age of 81. Um, more on the COVID-19 story. Uh, 75 doctors infected in one week. 57 million naira vaccine dose comes in batches. And also Kogi has been declared a high-risk state. Interesting. Uh, we can also find um, on the nation this morning, or your communities uh, uh, demand relocation of herders. Makinde State Police can curb conflicts. And also court remands PNID director in EFCC custody as a wiki lashes Buratai and others. All right, because of time, let's quickly get into it. Um, Mr. Wandu, you can uh, start with any, any two stories um, on the nation. Uh, well, um, the COVID-19 continue to talk about. Uh, there has been a, a spike, uh, and that news is affecting a lot of uh, things. The deaths are rising. And uh, the president uh, recently signed uh, uh, the... The United Protocol uh, Bill, uh, uh, whereby violators are expected to be prosecuted, and um, was fine. And the FCT say is fully ready for that. But my problem is that uh, it should be leadership by example of our leaders and not example uh, with protocols. They're not wearing face masks, they are not keeping social distancing. Just so what happened in Casino State last weekend, we had the president for. Uh, for registration uh, for the for it is not registered by ACC. We saw how the this was the rest of them. But the government will continue to do what it's supposed to do. And the citizens expected to also abide by it. But I believe the leader of the police was to practice not a question of do what I say uh, and to, uh, do what I do. Uh, and that is that. that. Um, then we look at the the back the uh sunny group uh and this in uh state of this after the, um, the what he did in uh is it and uh, he's received for full arms but um this morning the, the state government came out with a press release that they were they didn't invite him not invited by the uh, government of uh, the state so State like its own zone. Uh, but uh, what we are facing now is more self help by individuals because our uh, security apparatus failed. I uh, just read one of the uh, headlines uh, papers this morning. We are former president also to have uh, joined uh, voices with, uh, by advocating that it is time for us to go <coughs> to police. Um, well, I don't know if he's waking up so late or too late. Because even under his regime, such was advocated and they ignored it. But all in all, um, the service chiefs have been appointed, the new CTS have been appointed, they were important no last men, and uh, we hope that they will hit the ground. This is not time for apportioning them or whatever. We're having serious challenges across, not just in the south, in the northeast and northwest, south, south, southwest, and even the south is with some of those coming out yesterday. On what is happening in the south, uh, south east, uh, and so villagers that in itself is not the way to go. Right. So, uh, the, the government should be up on it and uh, living up its uh, expectation in the real. Then, we are talking of the IG, everybody is still waiting. That is a very, very vital uh, area. Uh, why the president is joining in Casino, we are still waiting for the appointment of 
a new police ID for the whole entire police force. I don't know why the <coughs> president showed the Nigerians to run. Well, to appoint, uh, that, uh, that, that one and the trend that is as important as that. You say the correct, but let's not know. All right, that one hasn't come up yet, <laughs> but hopefully it shows up in uh, other yes. papers this morning. So uh, we're going to move to another one now. Yes, let's um, now... And maybe talk about uh, other things there. Mm -hmm. Let's now take a look at uh, the uh, Punch newspaper. It says here, Herdsman invites armed kinsmen to dominate all your farms, says Monarch. And it says, Herders cutting down cocoa trees, burning cashew plantations. And that's according to a traditional ruler. Or your plans compensation for victims. Community welcomes Makinde with protests. Ogun silent on Igboho's visit, says Abiodun's aide misquoted on alleged invitation. This one says, police summon Ogun Hotelier over CCTV cameras uncovered in rooms. That's a very interesting one. Wow. Contempt, IG risk imprisonment as court summons police boss. Zamfara fumes as PTF lists five COVID-19 high-risk states. Security agencies will enforce jail terms against COVID-19 violators. That's according to the PTF. With state police, Amoteku won't be necessary, says Obasanjo. National identification number, NIN. Telcos, minister meets, turnout rises by 40%. Banks, non-performing loans, rise to 1.5 trillion naira. Also, these are the ones <clears throat> on the front page of the punch. Buhari Atiku, governors, others mourn as ex-minister Momo dies. Ex-governor Oni unveils bid for 2022 governorship. And Inquirer community protests herdsmen's incessant farm destruction, killings, and rape. So, yes, so let's uh, go into detail about this one, about the IGP and his, his retirement. He says, the IG risk being imprisoned as court summons the police boss. Mr. Wando. Oh, well, I don't know um, what's the, uh, why he was invited. I, I didn't see the news uh, by the court. Um, so I wouldn't know, I'm not mention what I don't know about. But as I said before, the, uh, the office of the IG expired yesterday. And by now, we ought to have, um, have we, support, we ought to have a new IGP by the president of silent after just the way he went about the short service chiefs that took months or it that even took years uh, for him to come to terms with. And even that the appointment said is is showing controversy because they need to be confirmed by the city uh, before, before taking up uh, of the of, taking up the office. So but I I hope that the president knows it. Uh, and, the, and most of the problem he, he, we are having in terms of um, security and insecurity, we need somebody to be on top of uh, uh, on on top of the job. Anything the IG do now, right from yesterday, will be turned down illegal because he's sitting in that office after the expiration of um, his state and by the new police act, which was also signed by the president. The IG is not supposed to sit on that seat. It is set uh, more than he to be. So uh, the president should know that there is a constitutional bridge uh, which is going on. Uh, and as the chief security order of Nigeria, it should not, if anything happens, you'll be heard once. We are not just the IG, because the IG is sitting there, I trust uh, for the president. And I hope that with the next few hours, we'll be able to come out to tell us what he will do whether to retain, extend the tenure of the current ID, or to appoint a new one. And there are too many people within the police hierarchy that do the job. Um, we cannot say because somebody is there today, he's the only one that quit. He's not the only one that can quit. There are still others that do the job. Mm. All right. Uh, so then let's see how it pans uh, within the next few hours. Um, we now have some clarity as to why the court summoned him. A federal high court in Abuja, uh, Justice Ijoma Ojuku, issued that summon against the IGP uh, because he allegedly refused to reinstate a deputy commissioner of police, Patrick Okoli, who was forcefully retired. But if the IGP is now you know, expected to vacate his office, uh, this, this should be the job of the next IGP then. Um, right. Which other story on the front page of the punch would you like to touch on before we go yeah, to... I, I want you to speak on the 
the story of uh, state police. It says uh, Amotekun won't be necessary um, with state police, and that is from former President Olusegun Obasanjo. Um, and I want you to speak on that because there's another story on the nation this morning that said uh, South South governors are planning their own security um, architecture, their own security setup. Um, so you know, is it is it you know likely that the whole you know yes, all the regions um, in the country? I, 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 yeah, go ahead. You know, will all the regions in the country yes, now as I be, said, be as I said interested in setting up their um, own security? That is, how, how we are, that is why we are talking about restructuring. Uh, we've been talking about for years that uh, we just to reject um, the structure of the Nigerians the way it is presently. It is work and good enough is on board. Before some part of this street, the station of town cannot fit. Now, uh, since everybody we have all agreed that there is the need to look at fragile structure of injustice and there's a need for the need to be able to fix up my children. Uh, probably to uh, uh, put down the powers of the federal government and then um, uh, pass on some of those powers to the state. That is the issue where uh, uh, state is about. Across the globe, that is where where federal has to take uh, the two structures in the blown trees. If you go to the United States and uh, in, you will see even local government areas have a uh, police system, and that in itself makes security very, very easy. It brings security closer to the people. The situation police commissioner has waited for the IG in Abuja to instruction before he can take certain decision on issue of security is not uh, is not good enough. And the governor is supposed to be the chief security sense of their state. How many within the police? How many uh, police people do we have across the area? So, uh, that is the, with the high level of security across the uh, across the land, there is a need for us to look at this and um, uh, look at the areas where the states can offer me to assist the federal government in police, especially within their local areas. Uh, we are having serious changes in the northeast. Um, the army is overstretched. The military is overstretched. Um, what they are, the military are engaging in police activities. That is of internal security of the country. Is the, is the work of the police. That of the military is to fight against external aggression. But now we are drafting the military to do what the job of police. I think we need to strengthen the police and not make sure that uh, um, some of these things are... I'm not surprised that, that the South is coming up, coming up with its own. Don't forget the East is also taking up, coming up with its own, despite that the e, ESN has, seems to have taken lead in the start is. But the Amotepo in the South was doing a good job. And um, uh, I, that is why most of these corridors are trying to see whether they replicate what is happening in the South. All right. Quickly now to The Guardian. Let's we'll see what, if we can uh, squeeze in a few of them before we uh, go. The Guardian newspapers, a major one there says, be first to take coronavirus vaccine. Can tells government yeah. officials. We could also see on The Guardian this morning, hurdles await travelers as airlines enforce new safety protocols. Uh, Canada levies $2,000 hotel quarantine fee after Nigerian traveler dies. And we could also move on. We'll see, uh, we'll resort to self-help if you fail to protect us, Ibarakpa residents tell Makinde. Uh, Southeast governors ban open grazing, order criminals out of forest. And also Sule and Mohamed Defa on Boko Haram's resurgence in Benue and Nasarawa. A strange disease hits Bauchi as 10 villagers have been hospitalized. That's also on The Guardian this morning. Uh, Mr. Wandu, uh, because of time, let's uh, see if you can quickly address one of these stories before we go. Yes, I'm looking at the here the, the press statement by the Khan uh, that um, government officials should take uh, the vaccine first. Where are the vaccines? We have any vaccine? <laughs> Other countries already take a view of vaccine. We don't have a single drop of vaccine in Nigeria. So which one are they going to take? What we have been told is that 100,000 we are in February, another 1 million, 1 million we arrive in March, uh, and, and, and the rest. But there's not been any conversation to make sure that Nigerians step. And we are talking about the protocols and the, and the NCDC and other government officials are talking about Corbyn uh, uh, movements and the rest of it. It's the basic instrument we need, which is the vaccine. Nobody is talking about what I'm hearing is about promising to arrive and it not arrive. That is that is total failure of leadership on our part. Why other countries, even within Africa, have taken delivery of vaccines? We are still thinking of when it will arrive. 
And uh, to me, is a very big problem. And a, 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 a danger to Nigeria. Some of them are already starting out and going to Dubai and the rest of them to take their vaccines. What of the average poor man that's living there doesn't have the means of traveling? Uh, we are more like an index species as far as Nigeria is concerned when it comes to issue of COVID like vaccine. We can only better look up to, to help us and also try to do the right thing rather not to contact this disease. All right. Chris Wandu, thank you so much. Uh, I think that's where we would wrap up uh, the discussions this morning. Thank you for your time and for waking up super early to join us. Uh, looking forward to another um, conversation with you again. Thank you. Thank you very much for waking me so early. It's been a pleasure here. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I enjoyed, you know, some of the, you know, points that he made, actually a lot of the points that he made. Um, and, you know, I think that one of the things that we would bring up um, later on, you know, we, on the breakfast is, you know, the idea of citizens resorting to self-help, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in the face of government's failure, you know, to protect lives and property. You know, almost, you know, the same way a lot of people have boreholes, a lot of people, you know, to provide water for themselves, generators, they have uh, inverters and solar energy um, uh, generators. There's people who, of course, would run to... Uh, traditional um, um, med medical, you know, practitioners. Some people even construct um, the roads, you know, in front of their houses. Know, so, so it, it shouldn't be different, you know, when people decide, okay, we'll have to protect ourselves, you know, if, if the government has failed to protect us. And oh. that's why you see some of these persons, you know, springing up as, as heroes in their communities. Um, Sunday Bo, of course, is the latest one. You know, it's not going to be shocking if there's going to be another one in the next couple of months. Yeah, in a different but way. I think that's really sad because it just it just reminds me of, you know, the pre-colonial times when, you know, you have these heroes, so to speak, that come up to defend their community from, you know, you know, British imperialists and the rest. It's so sad that the government, I mean, this is just so basic, the protection of lives and property. You should be able to do this. If you can't provide the things that we need to survive, at least the things, if you can't provide for our welfare, at least guarantee that we live right absolutely. it's just so sad and it's not it's not necessarily saying the government is doing absolutely nothing no, you know? i'm not well, saying I think, they're well, doing I think nothing we're just but saying they need to do better they do you know, to, to assure nigerians that their lives are safe regardless of where they choose to live yeah. um and you know we're also going to be looking at the angle of you know the, the steps that sunday boy is taking um is he breaking any laws you know by asking people to live you know is there any moral justification the government has for you know to tell him yeah. to stop um, or to, um, to to stand back at a time like this. So we'll talk about those things here sometime later during the program. Coming up next, we will be going through some things that happened today in history many years ago. Stay with us.